Hey folks, this is Mary. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about my bullet journal. This is something that some people have asked me about, um, some people online and some people um, that I work with. And um, I have a very simple, basic bullet journal and I thought it might be helpful for me to share that with you. I think a lot of people have the opinion that bullet journals have to be really complicated and really artsy and heavily decorated, but mine is very simple and very basic and that's the way that I like it. So, um, I am moving into a new bullet journal, which means I filled up my old one and I'm starting a new month and I'm starting a new journal. You don't have to start your journal at the beginning of the year. You start your journal wherever you want to. So I use a bullet journal until I fill it up and then I start another one, whatever time of the year it is. This is an Exceed notebook. It's, I believe this is a B5 size. It's a composition notebook size. And you can see here on the back it says Exceed. I think you can see that. It's a black cover so it's not photographing very well. But this has um, dotted paper. It has two bookmarks. Can you see the bookmarks? two bookmarks, it has an elastic band to close it, and it has a pocket in the back. Now previously I have used Walmart graph composition books. Those are my notebooks of choice, but they have changed the paper. The paper is thin enough to begin with, but it's even thinner now, and the blue grid is such a bright blue that it is unusable for me. So I'm very disappointed. I liked those notebooks so much, and they only cost 97 cents, which I enjoyed even more. And I would cover them with contact paper, and I would make my own pockets on the inside. You know, I would make pockets here, I'd make a pocket in the back, I would make my own ribbon bookmarks. But this one comes with a lot of those features. I probably will cover it, just because I like a nice, colorful cover. But we're going to see how this notebook does. Um, I've been using the smaller hardcover A5 XC notebooks. I have one for my fountain pen journal and one for my personal writing journal and I have been very pleased with those but so far the paper in this composition notebook size it's not making me all that happy but I'm gonna see how it goes and if we need to adjust later on we will adjust. Okay so oh I guess I should tell you about some of my supplies. So this is a Pigma Micron pen in the 08 size, <laughs> you can see I've just about worn all of the writing off of it. It looks like it says 03, or I guess that's a backwards 3, but this is the 08, and this is the, the, more, um, the more bold line. And I use this for making my headers, for drawing lines, things like that. And I get these over at the Norfolk Stationery. They're a couple of dollars individually, and they last a good long while. I used to use the Pitt Artist Pens, which were the first pens that I heard recommended, but they dried out so quickly. They were very expensive, and they dried out really fast. So these Pigma Microns work out much better for me. And then the bulk of my writing in my bullet journal I do with a Sharpie pen. And... I was hoping with this new journal that I would be able to use my fountain pens in it, but I'm guessing I will not because the Sharpie pen is designed not to bleed through cheap paper and it has served me well in the graph composition books. But in this journal, I don't know. We're going to have to see how that goes. There's a lot of shadowing, which I don't mind, but it seems excessive. So we'll see how, how that does. Um, I do have a ruler. I generally don't use a ruler when I make my spreads because I'm not that concerned about having straight lines or making everything look perfect. But since I was filming this and it was going to go on the internet forever, I thought maybe my lines better be straight. So I did use a ruler for most of my lines. And what else did I use? Um, I'm also not that worried about making mistakes in my bullet journal because, again, it's for my eyes only. But in this case, since I'm taping it and putting it on the internet, I did use some correction tape um, to cover up some mistakes. And I, I do use this occasionally, but not that often. But I seem to make a lot of mistakes this time. <laughs> I guess I was just nervous about filming myself. So I do use some correction tape. And I do like this correction tape better than the liquid whiteout because you don't have to wait for this to dry and it makes a nice smooth surface to write on. With the, the liquid whiteout, you have to paint it on and it's kind of rigid 
ridged and nubbly and it's sticky and it can smear. So I think the tape is a much better way to go. Now I don't do a lot of decorating in my bullet journal. I like to keep it really plain and really simple because too much decoration is distracting for me and it's not helpful. I love to watch the videos of the beautifully decorated bullet journals, but my own personal bullet journal I have to keep very, very simple. However, I do occasionally decorate with a bit of washi tape or a little bit of a marker. So I did choose to use these two washi tapes today. I have a little film strip washi tape and then some book washi tape and we will see how I used that shortly. So let's take a look at what I've done so far in my journal here. And I will try to make sure that I get this in the frame so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, um, I find it helpful when I'm setting up a new bullet journal to mark off my pages with post-it notes. And that way I can make sure that I'm not missing anything. I get the pages in the order that I want them. I can move the post-it notes around until I'm happy with the layout. And then I'll make my pages and then I'll take the post-it notes out. And the ones I use for my monthly spreads, I will just move them from month to month. So when I get ready to set up my new month, um, I will use the post-it notes to help me lay out that month's pages. So I do have to mention, for those of you that are not familiar, the bullet journal system was created by a man named Ryder Carroll. And he started the system, he created the website, he's made the original videos about it, and I highly recommend those. Um, I've been doing this for about two and a half years, and I watched his introduction to the bullet journal video many, many times to help me get started. But I did jump right in. I think I discovered the system probably on October 30th and by November 1st, I had a composition book and I was drawing out my first spreads. So if you're nervous about starting a bullet journal, don't be, just jump in and do it. Nobody else is gonna look at this except you. If you mess up, who cares? My, my first calendar spread that I drew, all the squares were all wonky and they were all different sizes and I just slapped some stickers on it and kept moving on with my life. So he will explain this system very well for you, but um, I will try to give it my own explanation. So you start off with the index, and if you buy the branded bullet journal notebook, it will come with page numbers. I always use really inexpensive notebooks that don't have page numbers, so I do number my pages. I don't number the index, but you'll see on the next page I have started numbering, and I will number all the way through the notebook. When I first get started in a new notebook, I'll number the first 100 pages, and then when I get closer to that 100 page mark, I'll go through and continue numbering until the end. So my index pages, um, this is where you keep a list of all the different kinds of pages in the book, and then you have the page numbers of those pages. I use my bullet journal for work and for personal things, and I rely on it heavily to keep track of my life for me. So I do use the index a lot. Um, I have seen videos from people who say they never use it, they don't include it. If they buy a bullet journal that has index pages already in it, they don't use them for anything but I find them very helpful and very useful. So try it out the way that Ryder Carroll started it with the index, see if you like it, and if you don't like it, that's the great thing about this system. You can give up any part of it that you don't use. Oh, and one helpful thing, I will group pages together. So like here, I've made a mark for my August pages. So everything to do with my August planning, I will just list all the page numbers here. Or if I have a recurring meeting that I take notes for, you know, I'll list in here supervisor's meeting. And then throughout the coming months, every time I have a supervisor's meeting, I'll just list that page number next to that original listing. That way it groups everything together and it saves space in my index. And these two pages of the index should last me for the entire journal. And the journal will probably last me about six or eight months. Okay. So the next spread that we come to is the future log. And this is where you do all of your future planning. And in Ryder Carroll's original video, he divides the pages into thirds and he writes three months down this side and three months down this side. And then you just write down all of the events that are coming up in those months. When I first started my bullet journal, I used that system and it did not work for me at all. This little bit of space for a month of events was not nearly enough for me. And I had crammed things with circles and arrows and written notes and all kinds of crazy stuff on there. It was not enough space. So I looked online to get some more ideas and I saw this vertical layout, so I thought I would try this. And this layout works very well for me. 
Now I have seen some people number one to 31 or however many days it is. They'll number from the first till the end of the month and then they'll have one line for each listing. That also does not work for me because I might have multiple events happening in one day. I could have a doctor's appointment. I could have a meeting. I could be, I could be going out with friends for drinks. Anything could be happening. It could be a lunar eclipse. Who knows? Whatever I want to write in here, I just write the date and then the event next to it. I don't worry about making sure that there's one line for each day because some days I have no events and some days I have multiple events. So I just write things down as they come approximately, you know, the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, the end of the month. And then when I get ready to set up my monthly spread, I'll come back here and look at my future log and get all the days in the right order. And I generally make... Um, two spreads for my future log and when I get into next year toward the end of my journal I'll have plenty of room to write down upcoming events and then if there's anything happening next year that is beyond August I'll just write it here in the looking ahead column because I might have doctor's appointments or anything else that, that might have been scheduled ahead. All right, this is a very important spread that I use for work, <laughs> and you might be wondering about the title. It's called Kenny Loggins, and I got this from a former supervisor. That is what he calls his list of passwords for, for work, and I thought that was really funny, so I use it too. So this is my Kenny Loggins page. It's all of my logins for work. I have many, many different logins and passwords for work, and they have to change on a regular basis, so this is a great place for me to keep track of stuff. I use this spread all the time, and it has saved me so many times. And also, you'll notice my headers are pretty simple. I like writing a large uppercase letter and then smaller uppercase letters and then I'll just draw some lines either underneath or I'll put lines to the side. I keep my headers very simple. I don't worry about doing calligraphy or fancy lettering or cursive or anything like that. I just print. I do all caps. It works fine for me. Here you see more of the same. The all capitals with the lines underneath. Now these are work contacts and again, I use this listing a lot. And then I have other contacts, which might be for work or personal or businesses I'm in touch with or whatever. And I have left all of these pages blank because, again, this is going to be posted on the Internet forever. And I don't want all of my personal information out there or other people's personal information, too. But I've set up all the pages. And then once my video is done, I will go back and I will fill in all of this information from my previous bullet journal. All right, now this is something that I'm toying with, <laughs> and I thought it was funny to call it Kevin Bacon because previously we had Kenny Loggins, and Kenny Loggins makes me think of Footloose, which makes me think of Kevin Bacon, so that was my work logins, and I have never had a place where I've written down my, my logins for home, and I do have trouble keeping track of my passwords for home. That's for things like my Amazon account, paying bills, things like that. And I'm toying with the idea of keeping them all in the same place. Um, there is a possibility I could lose my bullet journal and my passwords would be out there for other people to see. But I take my bullet journal with me everywhere and I haven't lost one yet. Knock on wood. So I'm still thinking about whether or not... I want to have a personal login list, but if I do decide to have one, it's going to go right here. And then the next few pages are just some fun pages that I like to have in all of my bullet journals. I transfer the information over from journal to journal. These are completely not necessary. They're not part of the system. It's just things that I like to do for myself, and you can make lists of whatever information you would like to have at hand. So I have the Portsmouth Humane Society wish list. Um, this is a animal shelter, the place where I adopted my dog from, and this is just a list of supplies that they're always looking for. And I like to have this around so if I'm out shopping and I see something on sale, I can look at the list and see if it's something that they might need. Okay, so here we see some fancy washi tape. And this is about as fancy and decorative as my pages get. I have my books to read on this side, and I have movies and TV to watch on this side. 
So I work in a library and I am surrounded by new and interesting books, but there's never enough time in the day. So rather than forgetting about some of these new books that I see, I would like a place to write them all down. And then if I get a chance to go back and read them, I can check them off so I know that they have been read. And I just have some pretty washi tape with books on it. And then over here, I decided to make a spread for movies and TV shows I would like to watch. I have finally entered the modern era, and I have gotten a subscription to Hulu. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Buffy the Vampire Slayer lately. That is my all-time favorite show. But, of course, there are many other shows that I see advertised or people at work tell me about. So I'd like a place to write those down. And I'm thinking movies on one side, TV shows on the other side. We'll see how that goes. But at least I'll have a place to keep track of those things. And again, here is one of my fancier headers. I just make this little heart arrow, which I think is adorable. So it's just a straight line with a heart on one end and some little diagonal lines on the other end. Cute and simple. All right, this is my affirmation page. And again, this is something I always like to have in my bullet journal. It's completely not necessary, but it just makes me happy knowing that it's here. I saw a list several years ago of the 30-day affirmation challenge, and this is just a positive phrase that you say to yourself every day, a different one for each of the 30 days of the month. Now, when I first saw this list, I did try the challenge, and I did say these phrases to myself every day. But now I just keep it around, so if I'm having a tough day, I can flip back here and look and see what day it is. Like, today is the 5th, and it says I am successful in whatever I do. So I can just keep that in mind throughout the day. I might write it on my on my daily page or write it wherever I might see it just to kind of refresh it in my mind. And then on this side, there are some other tips on ways to stay positive and how to create powerful affirmations. Again, I find them helpful. Um, I have gleaned these from different places over the years, and I just like to have them in all of my bullet journals. All right, here are some other fun things that I have put together over the years. Um, these are 10-minute tasks, and again, this is my super fancy decoration. If you'll notice the zero in 10, I have made a little stopwatch. Boy, did I think that was fancy when I came up with that one. <laughs> and this is about as complicated as my lettering ever gets. I tried to make these block letters, and I think it looks okay, but again, it's just for me, so who cares? But I have divided my tasks up into kitchen, organizing, laundry, outdoors, technology, cleaning, and personal. And again, these are just some different lists that I found online that I thought would be helpful. And I wanted to keep them all together in one place, so I put them in my bullet journal. And if I'm ever, you know, looking for something to do, or if I have some extra time on my hands, I can flip to this page and get some ideas. Now on this side, this is another list that I always like to have in my journal. Um, a few years ago, there was something going around the internet. I think it was called Everything is Awful and I'm Not Okay. And it was a list of things to do if you were just at the end of your rope. And I do struggle with anxiety and depression. And some days are not great days. So these are just some really easy and simple and fun things you can do to kind of snap yourself out of a bad mood. And I might not like all of them, but I have just compiled this list from looking at different websites. So if I ever need a little pick-me-up, I can always turn to this page and get some ideas. Now these pages are a work in progress. I have just recently started my YouTube channel, and I've been looking for some ideas about how to plan my videos for my YouTube channel. And I've seen a couple of videos about bullet journaling and YouTube planning, and I'm kind of compi compiling that information into spreads that will work for me. Um, I definitely want to keep this one. This is just for video ideas. And I've been writing down video ideas all over the place for months because <laughs> I've been thinking about doing a channel for a long time. So I just wanted a place to write down all of my ideas and then I can mark them off as I record them. And then on this side, I'm still not sure what I want to do with this. I thought I did and I had started making some little boxes, um, but I just don't know yet. So the good thing about a bullet journal is you can make it look like whatever you want to. And if you don't like it and you mess it up, you can use some correction tape or frequently, if I just want to cover up a page completely, or if I have an extra blank page left over, I will get a really pretty adult coloring page and just paste it over here 
it looks pretty whenever I pass the page. It makes me happy. And if I get a little free time, then I can do a little bit of coloring. Okay, so here is my first monthly spread of the journal. So in Writer Carol's system, you start with the future log. You have all of your events on the future log. And then when you come to your monthly spread, you make your calendar and you transfer all of the events from the future log and put it on the monthly calendar. Now his monthly calendar is super, super simple. It's just a list of the days from 1 to 31, or however many days there are in the month. And then you just write all of your events next to those days of the month. It's simple and brilliant. And I did try it, but I didn't like it. My brain likes to operate with a calendar that's in a grid spread. This is my preference. And if you don't want to mark out a calendar like this, you don't have to. You can try his very simple list calendar, which works perfectly. And I do start my calendar on Sunday and I end it on Saturday. Sometimes you'll see in planners, they have changed it so the beginning of the week is Monday and it goes through Sunday. I don't like that. I like the Sunday to Saturday setup. And I usually have some leftover space over here and you can fill this space with whatever you like. I have decided to put projects here and these are kind of more long-term things that I'm working on like reorganizing the attic or I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to think about it, but whatever kind of long-term ongoing projects I have here, I will put here and then write down whatever my progress is on them. Now, these are generally concrete things that I can accomplish, not more vague kind of, you know, vague sounding goals like, you know, get in shape or eat healthier or something like that, but just really specific concrete goals that I, that have a definite end date to them. And then I usually include a wish list, and these are for more long-term, generally more expensive things. I do enjoy fountain pens, so I usually have some different fountain pen items on here that I'm dreaming of someday purchasing. I have been doing much too much fountain pen purchasing lately, so I should have nothing on this wish list, but we shall see. And there's usually some leftover space on my spread, and I enjoy writing some kind of quote on it. It could be an inspirational quote, it could be a seasonal quote, or just something fun that I read somewhere. Um, in this case, it's a quote about August, and it says, The August cloud suddenly melts into streams of rain. And that is from William Cullen Bryant, and I thought that was lovely. Okay. So on the back of my calendar page, this has been a variety of different things and I haven't found the thing that I want it to be yet. I tried doing a financial tracker on here. I never kept up with it. I've tried some different journaling type things. I didn't like that. So I'm really not sure what I want to go on this page, but this page can just hang out here and be blank until I'm ready to fill it. Um, I think I might do some more YouTube tracking on this page. I saw some interesting spreads, so we'll see what I come up with. But for right now, it's just in a holding pattern. Now over here is a really important spread that I've been doing for probably over a year now. And I saw this idea originally from Plant Based Bride, and I will link her channel below so you can check out her video. And this is my habit, mood, and sleep tracker. So if you've heard about bullet journals, you've probably heard that there's a lot of habit tracking involved. And I don't do a whole lot of that, but the real value I see in this spread is to see how my sleep and my moods affect each other and then how it also affects the things I accomplish during the day. So I start at the top with the days of the month, and I also put the day of the week on top of it. And I have a list of a few habits that I would like to work on this month. So I've got journaling, devotions, water, and walking my dog Gus. And I just want to see if I can accomplish these things this month. I try not to put any pressure on myself, but I just put a little dot on the day next to, you know, next to the item. I'll put dots where I have accomplished those things. And then this is something that I've just recently been trying. These are different symptoms that I might have throughout the day. Um, I've got headache, poor sleep, nausea, or tired, and it's just if I happen to feel one of those things on a certain day, I'll mark it, and then over the course of the month, I can see if there's a pattern to those symptoms. And then down here, we have my mood, and again, I struggle with anxiety and depression, and Gus sounds like he has a hairball. <laughs> Are you okay, puppy? I think he's okay. So where was I? Yes, my moods. So I have a range of what you would probably consider more negative moods, and I don't have as many happy moods, but that's just my own personal 
scale of moods. You you will certainly need to make your own scale of moods. Um, so you can fill these in with anything you like, which again is the great thing about the bullet journal. I don't have to use somebody else's scale. I made the scale myself. So at the very bottom, I have hopeless, and then I have depressed, overwhelmed, anxious, angry, neutral, happy, ecstatic, and lotto. That's for when I win the lottery and... That will be awesome if that happens. <laughs> and I might have more than one feeling on a particular day. So I will just put a dot next to everything that I feel that day. And again, over the course of the month, I can see how my moods change. And then um, lastly, at the bottom, I have um, the numbers 2 through 10. And those are how many hours of sleep I have gotten on that day. And I haven't been sleeping very well. So it's interesting to see how my sleep and my moods affect each other. And then if they lead to any other issues up here. And this might be too much information, but I also track my time of the month up here. So I'll just circle the days. And then again, I can see how that might be affecting my mood or my sleep. So this is packed full of information. I love this layout. And I think the plant-based bride explains it really well. So if you're interested in trying that, be sure to check out her video. And um, of course, you can tweak this to track whatever you're interested in. All right, and then we have my first weekly spread of the month. And again, in Ryder Carroll's system, he has the future log, the monthly spread, and the daily spread. And I tried the daily spread when I first started bullet journaling, but it just it didn't work for me. I didn't like it. I didn't find it helpful. What I wanted was to be able to see the whole week in one glance and all of my tasks at one glance. So I came up with this layout, but I've seen many other people do a similar layout. So of course, this is not, a, not an original idea. It's just the one that I like the most. So I, I have my dates across the top and then my days of the week down the side. And you see, I have these little flags written around the date. Can you see that? I think you can see that. Again, this is as fancy as it gets. <laughs> I either write the, the flag with the, uh, with the cutout or then I write one with a point. And when I say I do it with a point, I mean I do it like this. And then I'll write, you know, Monday the 3rd. So either it's cut out or it's pointed. That's all I do. I've tried a couple of other little formats, but they just seem too fiddly and complicated and distracting. So I've got two options here. I'm happy with those two options. So I have my seven days down here. And then in this section, I will put any appointments, meetings, any places I have to go that day. I'll also keep track of my work hours on this side. And then on this side, it can be any extra information that I need to put there. Um, I might write down some interesting things that happened that day. So when I go to journal later, I'll have some record of the, of the events to jog my memory. Um, I might write down my affirmation for the day. Um, I might write down my number of subscribers for that day for my new YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for subscribing. I really appreciate your support, and I have been recording it in my bullet journal. I'm so excited. Um, but, you know, absolutely anything can go in this column that I want to. Um, sometimes if I have tasks that have to be done on a particular day, I will write them on that day of the week on this side as well. And then over here, I have my tasks. So I have my work to-dos, my home to-dos, I have a shopping list, and then any other random notes. And I do use my bullet journal for work and for home, and I write down absolutely everything. Some weeks are better than other weeks. Sometimes I have to write down things like make my bed, or take out the trash, or for work I might have to write down turn in my timesheet, or just little simple things because sometimes my brain is just so overloaded, I can't keep track of anything, but I don't have to because my bullet journal keeps track of it for me. And um, I got in the habit last year of leaving a space across the top for, again, for a little quotation. And sometimes I, I use inspirational quotations and sometimes I use seasonal or holiday based ones. And I thought it would be nice to do some summer or August quotes this month. So you saw the one I put on the monthly spread. And then this one here, it says, in parching August, wind... Oh, excuse me, I'm reading terribly. In parching August... <laughs> oh my gosh. I really can read, I promise. In parching August wind, cornfields bow the head. And that's from a poem by Christina Rossetti. And I thought that was lovely. So I managed to squeeze something up there across the top. And that, that makes it fun. So anyway, that is my setup for my new bullet journal. And then I will just turn the page. And on these pages, I will keep track of meeting notes or 
I'll brainstorm lists of things or anything I need to write down, I will write down on these pages. And then when I get to next Sunday, I will turn the page and I will make my weekly spread with my days and my tasks for the following week. And I just keep doing that over and over again. And then I write things down in my index so I can find them later. Okay, one final piece of the bullet journal system that I haven't mentioned yet is the key. And I've been using the same, um, the same symbols in my key for so long that I don't even feel the need to put a key in my bullet journal anymore. But just in case you're wondering about the symbols that I use, um, this is very similar to Writer Carol's original system. I use a dot next to a task. When I have completed the task, I draw an X through it. If the task has been canceled or it's no longer relevant or necessary, I just draw a line through it. If he uses the greater than and less than symbols, but I actually like to draw a full arrow because to me that is more visual, it stands out better. So the forward arrow means I have migrated it to my next weekly spread, or if it's the end of the month, to my next month spread. And if it's a backwards facing arrow, then I have moved it elsewhere. Most likely I've put it on um, a goal page, my monthly project page, I've moved it to the future log, somewhere else. And just a dash is something that I use for a note. Like if I'm taking notes in a meeting, I'll put dashes by all of my notes. And then if something is a high priority, I'll put a star next to it. So that is, this is an example of what that would look like. So I would have a dot for my task, and then I write down what the task is, and then next to that dot, I put a star. So when I'm looking down my list of tasks on my task list, the ones that have the star next to them really stand out very well. All right, well, I think that is all of the parts of the bullet journal system that I wanted to talk about. Um, hopefully it all made sense and it wasn't too overwhelming. But if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And be sure to check out Writer Carol's videos. Um, I will also leave a link to Boho Berry's videos. She has a very a very well done set of instructional videos on the bullet journal system. But it really doesn't have to be complicated and you can, you can tweak it to make it fit all of your needs, which is what I love about it so much. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you again soon. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.